can you give me a glass of water? I can't get up. I can't get up. I don't know what happened there. Recording process. Okay. I, I can't get up. You know, what, what's going on? Got it. Hold on a second. I got messages on my screens. You just record, start recording. Good job. Right on time, guys. Okay. So, uh, so you know, I can't get up. Help me. So you've worked out hard. Yeah, you, you have a goal of where you want to be, right? And, and you, you're working out and you're looking in the mirror and you're thinking, hey, I'm so great, man. I'm in so much pain, though, you know? Well, guys, it's no different when you train your brain. You know that? Look, uh, Afnan just said you become addicted to it. Well, guys, you become addicted to day one once you understand it. You know that? You become addicted to day one. Rick Roberry is addicted to day one. Every day in Rick Roberry's life is day one. You know why? Because I developed those muscles years and years and years ago. It's so simple, guys. What you got to do is you got to go through the practice. You got to go through the exercise of training that brain. And once you do that, you wake up in the morning and you know what? That fear is going to be there. You're going to go, ha, Rick Sam is going to be here. What the hell? Let's go on and win. You see, this is kind of how it works. This is kind of how it works, right? Because when you wait, at first it's hard. At first, your brain is going to cramp up, you know, you, because the natural man, the natural woman is a negative beast. You understand that? Yeah, you, you know, if you spend time with any friends, what are you doing? Bitching and complaining about the one of the friends is not there. We are negative creatures. It takes no energy. It takes no talent. It takes no vision to be negative. But to be positive, to think in, win, in the winning ways, takes tremendous effort. It takes planning. It takes all kinds of things because if you don't do all of those things, you will lose. You will lose. And nobody wants to lose. And so this is how important day one is. If we all agree that we're negative creatures by nature, and that's the easy pathway, right, in life, is just be negative. Somebody says something negative to you, you try to beat them with something more negative. You know that's how it goes, right? You know that's what you do, right? So you've got to take a conscious effort to not be that person. And if you're around people like that, you've got to make a change in your life about who you spend your time with. It's simple. It's simple, guys. Okay, so so here you are now. Uh, you know, you got the, the, the fear thing. You're negative, all that kind of stuff. Guys, all you have to do is make a mental attitude adjustment. We're still on attitude, right? We haven't started with activity. I have some unbelievable stuff on activity. But you, you've got to get your attitude right. And that attitude, getting the right attitude, having day one mentality gives you power, posture, positivity, and presence. When you go out into the world that day, everybody says yes to you. Everybody loves you. Everybody wants to follow you. Everybody wants to be your friend. Everybody wants more of your time. They want to be around you all the time. You see, human beings feel the important things and they hear the unimportant things. If you think you're just going just gonna to yap at somebody, it's going to change their life, it never works. They got to feel you. They got to they gotta feel that energy because that energy is what's addictive. That's the thing that wants that they want, they want to be around. They want to feel that because very few people have that. Be the center of the generator. In other words, be the generator of energy to other people. In order to do that, you got to find a way to put fuel in the generator, make it run, right? And so that's what day one is. You wake up in the morning, you got that negative thought, you're so damn, ah, I knew that was going to happen. For me, it's just a laughable event. And I'd like, oh, geez. <clears throat> yeah, you know, so I just got three death threats. Big deal, you know, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, right? <clears throat> and I compartmentalize it. And this is what I do visually, because we're visual creatures. I go like this, and I go like this. Deal with it another day. <clears throat> Here's the other thing, guys. How many of you have had something bad happen to you in your life? Everybody say yes. Uh, I've had something bad happen to me in your life. How many of you have had a bad day? How many of you had your best guy quit? How many of you have not ranked up when you wanted to rank up? How many of you fall short of just a little bit of volume to do something? How many of you didn't get the relationship you want immediately, right? Well, welcome to the world. Welcome to the world, okay? But the truth of the matter is, is for those people that are in that mindset, that, that allow that to consume their lives, guys, they'll never win. You got to learn how to compartmentalize. It's got to be automatic. Then what you do is you read, you pray, you talk to people, you meditate, you you change who you're around. You go to breakfast. Some of you know you're po it's positive. Once you're in that day one mentality, once you are there, you'll know it because you're going to be so excited to talk to people, right? 
And, and you know that when you talk to people, they're going to say yes to you. They're going to love you. You feel good about your life. You feel good about your business. You love it, right? Now, all of a sudden, the world opens up to you. It's an amazing experience, guys. Day one mentality. Without it, I truly believe you can't win. You know, people might call it all kinds of different things, guys. I just put a title on it. And now they call me Mr. Day One. But I just put a title on it. See, the key is to wake up every morning, find a way to be positive so you got power for the day, right? I mean, it's a simple concept. We all know that's true. I just say it's day one. Everywhere I go in the world, whether it's hundreds of people or thousands of people in the audience, and I say, what day is it? Everybody stands up and screams. Can you imagine thousands of people in Europe standing up and going, day one, day one. Can you imagine the... Uh, the, the content that you'll get for your social media at that event, if you show up, it's going to be crazy, guys. Crazy, crazy. Can't put a dollar value on that. So once you're in day one, okay, and I got to get through this stuff, you got to understand that whatever you got to do to put that negative away, do the positive, you're, what you're doing is now you're training that brain. And what happens, you do it tomorrow, you do it the next day, and it's going to be hard for a while. It's going to be really hard for a while. But you see what happens eventually, it's just automatic. Rick Roberry wakes up every day. He's just on automatic, right? He's just on automatic. He wakes up every day. He just says, ah, day one. Here we go. Oh, here's that little thing that was really bothering me. That's gone. You know, boom, there it is. Okay, now, hope and opportunity and fear cannot exist in the same space. Okay, so let's hope. Let's look at what my why, my goals. Who can I help? How can I change your lives? You know, all that kind of stuff. And I move forward through the day. Now, you're ready to go to work. What do you do? <laughs> you got the attitude, you're ready to kill, right? But you can't go out there and just throw up all over everybody. You can't do that, okay? You got to have a plan to do this. Activity. But I, I just did a video for YouTube here uh, uh, in Italy, and it was about uh, creating a warm market list. And I want to touch on this just a little bit because I don't think that some of you, especially the young people that are totally dependent on social media, addicted to it, uh, really understand this side of reality. And I'm going to share that with you. And I mean that in a loving, caring way, guys. I've just done this for too long. I've seen too many success stories and too many failures from people who should have been success stories. And this is how it works. You know, if you've got a store out there, you're going to open up a store and it's got shelves and it's got employees with little name badges and it's got the cash register up front and customers start walking in the door and all the shelves are empty. <laughs> in the store. How are you going to sell anything? How, how are they going to buy anything? Well, guys, in network marketing, your inventory is your warm market list, leads, somebody to talk to. You see, in the one, two, and three things that we do, the hardest things is what the leaders do first, great leaders do first. They're all around showing the plan to somebody. It's always about direct contact with an individual and showing them what we do. That's what we do. That's what we do, okay? And so, and so here you are. Um, um, you you got to have a name list, and so you got to have a warm market list. Let me, I had an exercise a few years ago, guys. I did with a number of groups. I did it a lot. I'd have hundreds of people in a room, and I'd hand out papers to people. Those were in the days we handed out a paper, and it had 100 names on it. It had a hundred, one through 100. It had little, little lines out the side. I said, I want you to, to think in your mind and kind of come up with a mar warm market list because that's where this whole business starts. Without a warm market list, you've got no inventory in the store. You're going to just struggle. You're, you're, you're just going to advertise out there and hope somebody likes you. Okay, you, you remember my piano story? I've told a few of you guys. Guys, I sold pianos when I, before I got into the big business here. And I loved it. I only did it for six months, but I set every record in all of these stores. I had five stores. I set all the records in the first two months I was there. For, I sold more myself than all the other salesmen in the stores. How does somebody do that? How, you know, I sat in the store. I didn't want it to, them to pay me. I just wanted to make a commission when they sold me the damn piano, right? Just pay me a little more when I sell something. Don't pay me anything for just being here. So I, I'm not an employee, right? I want to be a, an independent contractor. And so we agreed on this. And so I sat in the store. The problem was this store had 100 brand new pianos in it, but a piano is a once-in-a-lifetime purchase for a family. So to three people a day come to the store, and there's three, uh, three uh, other salesmen there, and they're all sitting there, and, and if somebody's running up to the door, oh, that's my uncle, or I, I, I talked to that guy the other day. You know, we're just lying, you know, to try to tag that person coming in. I finally said, man, this is BS. I mean, I'm advertising. The store is advertising, and people are trying to come to me. Guys, think 
relate with social media here, okay, as to what how this plays into this story, all right? You put out the post, you put out that kind of stuff, very few people are going to have the kind of response rate they need to be successful. Some will, but most will not, okay? So here's the deal. <clears throat> I didn't want to take it for chance. I didn't want to wait for somebody somewhere in the world to decide that they want to buy a piano. I wanted to go out and make them decide to buy a piano. So I just said, I, I talked to the manager of the store, and I was only like 21 years old. I said, look, give me a whole bunch of brochures, and I'm just going to hit the road with it. He said, what the hell? You know, and so I said, yeah, let me just go do it. And so I took, a, I took, I mean, a two or 300 brochures, and I went out, and I just went into neighborhoods, and I just went up to the door, up to the door. I said, hey, look, I'm just, I'm just here today to try to upgrade your piano, because most people had already had a piano, right? And, and they said, I don't have a piano. Well, great, you should have one. Do you understand? And I told them all the psychology behind music, because I was a very musical person. I had a band, sang professionally for years, and I loved music, and so it was good for me. I sold pianos and piano. I sold several pianos every day and I made seven, eight, nine hundred dollars, thousand dollars on each piano. I made so much money that everybody was like, what, what the hell is going on? But nobody would do what I was doing. You see, here I proved the model, but everybody was too afraid, too much fear to win. You see, it was hard for me. Every time I knocked on the door, I prayed they wouldn't open the damn door, right? And when they opened the door, I just kind of said, well, yeah, and then, you know, I had this one liner, one line of what I said. I said that one line and then the conversation was going, right? And I was never pressure. I just said, you know, we got some of the most amazing brand new piano. The new pianos are just, you know, you know, 10 times better than the old pianos. You probably have an old piano now, don't you? Well, look, let me tell you something. I'll give you $800 for that piano. And this is $2,300. So you're only going to pay the difference on that. And we can deliver it for free. Nine and a half to this afternoon, okay? Guys, people said yes to that pitch, stupid as it was. You know why? Because what I understood was the power of numbers. I understood sorting and sifting. I learned at a very early age the numbers business. And the numbers business, if you don't understand it, guys, will drive you out of business. You understand that, right? So if you think you're going to talk to four, five, six people, and all of a sudden they're just going to say yes, you're going to be rich, guys, go get a job at 7-Eleven, guys. You're done. OK, you got it. You got to have hundreds of names. You got to sort and sift forever and ever. It never ends. Right. Because people leave. You got to replace it. They leave. You got to replace it. It's frustrating. But you know, some things are worth one hundred thousand dollars a month. Ask a few of these guys that are making it here. Right. It's worth it. It's worth it. And so I set all records for that company. What I understood is that, see, at one time I had a, a I was one of the biggest dealers in the United States for Dish Network, the little tiny dishes before they were out there. Nobody had them on their houses yet. The timing again, right? And, and I went out there and, and, and just killed it. Just killed it, you know? I, 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 that, because timing was absolutely everything to me. And I, you know, I'm not, I'm not even tell it. So I don't have time for that story because I've got too much going on here right now. So let's get back to the name list, okay? What, well, let me tell it since I told you. I used to put up billboards around the cities, right? That said, if you want a satellite dish, call Rick at you know, 1-800, whatever like that, right? I spent thousands and thousands of dollars a month, guys, on these boards. I had like 10 of them up all over the place. I went to one little fair, one little county fair, and sold more in three days than all my boards did all week. You know why? Because I went right after the cousin. They walked by and said, hey, have you seen this? Look at this right here. Hey, how about this? Have you heard about the new dish? And I, I made a fortune. I, I'm making 20, 30,000 a week selling those stupid dishes at a little fair, right? So I understand the value of, of advertising, but advertising is more about branding, guys, than it is about closing sales. And social media, for most people, is just an advertising uh, platform. You've got to learn how to convert that into DMs and real conversations, okay? But you've got to develop your name list, guys. You've got to have somewhere to start. When a new person comes in, they, they write down their list. Like I told you, a couple of hundred people in the room, uh, you know, they write down their names. I give them 10 minutes. I say, okay, go. I said, write down as many people as you know on your list. They, and I said, end of 10 minutes, I said, how many people have two? Raise your hand. How many people, three, four, five? Guys, by the time I got to six or seven or eight, half the people were not raising their hands after 10 minutes. They couldn't write down seven names. And I thought, it's always the same story. I says, okay, let me, let me help you with this. Let me do another exercise. It's called a memory jogger. What a memory jogger is, you can Google it online, MLM memory jogger, and just get one, print it out. And you can, it, what it is, it's uh, two or three pages of just things like, what's my aunt's name, my uncle, my cousins, my mom, dad, brother, sister, who's my plumber, who, who served me my dinner at the restaurant, you know, where did I eat at, who's the owners at this place, who's the electrician, you know, who, who did I bought my car from? And it goes through this list. I like, like maybe 200 
different categories of people you might know somebody in. And so I handed out this memory jogger to the same people, right? I said, okay, I'm going to give you 10 minutes because out, out to the side of each category was a line. I said, you don't need to write down a name. There's not time for that. I said, because here's what we're going to do. I want you to think of somebody you know in that category. And if you can think of somebody, just put a check in that box. I said, okay, go. 10 minutes up. I said, okay, people, exam's over. Put your pencils down. They put their pencils down. Everybody's laughing like they're back at university, right? And, uh, and I said, okay, how many, how many of you got 50 names? More than half the room raised their hand. I said, how about 100? A third of the room. We had people at 150 names, guys, in 10 minutes on that thing that had seven or eight or 10 before. Just from a memory jogger. Now, why is that important, guys? Because you got to understand, if you don't understand the numbers business, guys, if you got you have five or 10 or 15 people on your name list, you're done. I mean, you got to get lucky. It's like winning in the lottery. See, don't you want to go out and hit every door and sell as many pianos as you can? Or you don't want to just get lucky. One person comes in and buys it sometime. Maybe. Okay, so getting that name list and then knowing what to do with that name list is absolutely essential. See, if you have 100 names, one says no, it doesn't bother you. There's only 1%, right? If you've got 10 names, one says no, you think you're out of business because that's 10% of your market, right? <laughs> so you got to have the numbers just to get rid of the fear factor, if nothing else. And <clears throat> So what do you do once you have the name list? Well, everybody's wrong when they try to guess who will be successful or not. That there's never been a man or a woman that you've been able to figure out, you know, um, what in the heck is on the screen? You'll never be able to figure out. You can't tell whether they're going to win or lose until you give them a chance to play in the game. You got to give them a chance to carry the ball, guys. You got to give them a chance to play in the game. And so what you do is you just treat everybody the same. See, what your idea is, is I'm just, I, this is what I, my name list, this is why I have it. Number one, why does everybody in my whole career always ask me where they can buy cold leads? <laughs> When they haven't even got their warm market talk to yet. You know what that is? Fear of rejection from people they know. Those are the ones you talk to first. And you know the people that wrote down five, six, seven names? Do you know why? Because those are the people that were easy for them to talk to. Not who they knew, but just who was easy for them to talk to, which means they're down below them on the socioeconomic ladder, right? which means you're recruiting down. You never get ahead, recruit down. You always recruit up. It's taught in this industry over and over again. So you got to recruit up, right? Well, well, well. when you got all of these names and, and, and you got to go after them and try to uh, help them understand the business, the whole reason that you have these names is to show them the plan. The idea is show them the plan, put them into the activity pipeline, right? So the idea is what's the easiest way to get to this person? I'm not going to get into those details here. It's on some training on some of the YouTubes I'm doing. But here's what you do. Okay, this, this part's kind of fun, okay? What you're going to do now is you're going to actually work with someone else. Never, never do hard things by yourself. Remember that. And the hardest thing we do in this business is approaching people with a message. But once you approach them with a the message, once they, you show them the plan, they're in the activity pipeline, then you got to ask them a question. Let me, tell you, let me tell you what people that go nowhere do. They always expect the other person to say, please sign me up right now. They never do that, even when they're interested. Okay, so what you got to do is you got to have a system that gets to the question of, do you want to sign up now? That's what you got to do, right? But you can't say, do you want to get in now? That's just the wrong way to do it. What you got to do is you got to you got to sort and sift these numbers because you're putting as many people in the activity pipeline again. You're sorting and sifting these people as they're coming out the other end. You got to ask them a question. You say, "Look, when I evaluate any project, I, I I try to determine my my interest in it by rating myself a one, two, or three. One meaning yeah, I want to be a rep, make money like you are, sell it to just be a customer, or three, I'm not interested now. And, and so from the information you've seen so far, which you showed them the plan. Would you consider yourself to be a one, two, or three at this moment? Then they say, I'm a one. Great. Let me get you on the, on the phone with Anthony or Kane or Connor or one of these other great leaders out there, after these guys, okay? Well, I think I'm a two. Great. Let's look at the products and see what, what's best for you in your situation right now. Three, I'm not interested right now. Now, this is where inexperienced people get in trouble. This is what happens when somebody says no to them. They go, oh, my God, I'm an idiot. 
Why do I even try this business? Are those people mentally deficient? Didn't they understand anything I said? See, what you got to understand is three is the most profitable answer you can get. When somebody says, no, I'm not interested right now, not not interested, but not interested right now, this is what you do. You say, great, fantastic. Oh, man, you, you have so, you're so much integrity and so honesty. I really appreciate that. Look, just give me the, the name of three uh, people that you know so I can go give them the same simple information I got you. A lot of people are benefiting from it. Okay. And you know why they give you the referrals? I wrote whole systems on this, guys, back in the financial days. The, the third-party referral systems. I, I The industry used it. I'm telling you, they give you the referrals. You know why? Because they're guilty. They said no. They said no to you, and they feel bad because you've been so nice. Nobody feels guilty when they say no to an asshole. Okay? They feel guilty when they say no to a really nice person that's been very respectful. <laughs> Somebody wrote duds lead to studs. <laughs> Man, that's I haven't used that term for years. Thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> I can't remember what I'm saying now. That, that's funny. That's funny. Okay. So what you got to understand is that that person could give you three referrals because they feel guilty. So this is what happened. So then you go to Bob gives you three referrals. He said no for now. And he and he sends you to his friends, right? So you go to Sally. You say, hey, Bob just sent me over here to get you some information he looked at. Uh, and I, I just want to get that in your hands right now. And she looks at the information, she's sure of the plan. You know, she says, I'm in. I'm a one. Damn, I'm going to get rich at this thing. I'm going to go rape my job. I'm going to have real freedom in my life. I say, you know what? I agree. You're just the right kind of person for what we're doing. Hey, let's give Bob a call. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we do, the first phone, phone call we make or the first visit or Zoom we do is with Bob. Bob, I'm with Sally. And listen, she's a one. And she's going to have freedom, get out of her job. She can make a ton of money. We just wanted to thank you so much for referring her to me. And Sally's, oh, yeah, thanks, Bob. Really appreciate it. Goodbye. Okay, we go to the next person. That's John, right? John says, I'm a one. Great. Let's call Bob. We call Bob. Bob, thank you so much for the referral. John's a wine. He's going to make a lot of money. He's going to be financially free. So what's Bob thinking right now? See, nobody wants to be first in. Every, everybody wants to follow someone into the fire, but no one wants to be first to jump in. You understand that, right? So what's happened now is Bob said, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute now. Hold on. I did, uh, what's going on? Did I miss out on something? Is something going on? You see, there's two. There's two emotions that drive human beings, guys. Number one is hope of gain, but the most multiple times more powerful is fear of loss. And we have just poured fear of loss buckets all over Bob. And so Bob has no, that he has no option, okay, but to say, let me look at it again. So that's what he does. The invitation process, guys, is very interesting. When you can, you can be just about bad at everything in network marketing, but if you get good at inviting people to, to see the plan, to the message, you can literally make a fortune this thing. Because you see, what you say matters. What you say matters. And that's a whole other training session. But you see, the invitation process, what your idea of that is, is to get somebody to look at, a, 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 to show them the plan, to look at a message without pressuring them without chasing them, without them make, feeling like they're a, an object to you or a dollar sign to you. And there's all kinds of ways to do that in the invitation process. Because I've told my fish story so many times, I don't even dare tell it again to this group. But, you know, if you're out, uh, if you're out fishing in, in a lake, okay, and you're out there and you've got a big bucket and you got a fishing pole, and you just start whipping the water with that fishing pole, hoping the fish are just going to jump in the bucket, what's your day going to look like, right? There's going to be no fish. You're going to be wet and cold. You're going to go home and starve to death if you're playing on dinner with fish that night. Now, what you do is this. You tease and lure the fish, understanding it's the fish's idea to bite the bait because the presentation they were given was so compelling. Does that make sense? Same way with people, guys. If you feel like you're slapping the water with a fishing pole and you're trying to back off a little bit, take a breath, chill. Okay, and get right back into the, you know, make it be their idea. Make them chase you. Bottom line is that the right kind of people are going to respond to your message no matter what you say because they're looking. They're in, the, they're in change mode, right? They're in change mode. 
Okay, so I want to move on this last session because I this last section of this um, because now I get to the time so fast. Um, it's about getting people to to live meetings or to Zoom calls. So one of the challenges that we have in network marketing, guys, is that people lie to us continually. In other words, if you if you had like the the European event or like any live event that you might have or any Zoom call you might have. You know, the tri you're saying, look, I I'm having this event. Will you please show up? They go, yeah, absolutely. Guarantee it. I'll be there. You know, no problem whatsoever. So you go to the, so uh, then you invite 15 people, right? And, and you're bragging to all your upline leaders there. But man, I got 15 people here. You got a little block of chairs all blocked out there. You know, 15 empty chairs. You're going to fill all of them. You're going to be number one in the company. You're going to show everybody that you, you got it going on, right? Well, you get there 30 minutes early. Make sure you don't miss anybody that gets there early to the meeting, right? And they all said, absolutely, we'll be there, guaranteed. I'll be there, okay? Or they say, uh, will you be there? They say, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll try. You know, great. And you take that as a yes, that's a no, okay? So so you're, you're in the meeting. You get there early because you want to be able to handle the crowd of people that's coming based on your efforts, right? <laughs> I love this part. This is like one of my favorite things, okay? It's called long donkey face syndrome. What happens is that at 15 minutes to start, 10 minutes to start, five minutes to start, two minutes to start, you're asking the leaders, can we start a little late? Because I have people coming, they're getting here late. No, we got to start on time. All right. So they start on time and here you are, okay? 15 empty chairs because you've roped them off so nobody else can have them, right? And you're looking out the window in the back of the room, sitting there with your legs crossed like this, going, they told me they were going to be here. They promised, yeah, yeah, that old donkey face, right? You guys, uh, you guys have been there, right? You can all relate with this, right? It's like, oh, oh, man, they promised me. They told me that. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Just remember that, okay? Rick Rovery makes that kind of sound sometimes. Because I get it. I've been there. No, more people have not showed up for me than anybody on this in this company, guaranteed. Okay, <laughs> donkey face syndrome, guys, happens to everybody because you see now, now all of a sudden you went from being the top guy in the company to be a total dud, right? Now it's time to turn that dud into the stud, like you said. But if the thing is, is, is they've got to understand that the people who lie to you the most are the people who love you the most. You understand that? The people who love you the most are the people who lie to you the easiest. You know why? Because they're they're trying to preserve the relationship. They don't want to go to some damn meeting, right? But they say yes to you just to make you happy for the moment. And here's the other thing. There's a lot of these people, guys, that are really intending on being to that meeting. But let me tell you why they're not there. This is so important to understand. Look, if you hunt, you got to understand animals. If you fish, you got to understand the fish right? You've got to understand the human mentality. So it's, it, so they, you ask them on Monday, they're going to be there on Thursday night and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they're going to be there. They're kind of planning for it. Thursday comes, they get home from work, it's two hours till they got to be at the meeting. And guess what? Damn, I'm tired. I'm hungry. Did you know that new that new, uh, you know, Hollywood housewives, uh, you know, thing is on tonight, you know, uh, I can't miss that. And, you know, I just don't feel right. And so they always cancel in the last hour. <laughs> That's when the decision is made to not come to the meeting. They promise you they're going to come to is in the first one or in the last one or two hours where it's time for them to go. When they have to actually get up, get ready and leave the house. That's it. Or even on a Zoom. It's the same thing. Okay. If you understand that, this is what you say to them when you invite them. When you're inviting them, you're saying, look, I've only got three chairs. My assignment for this new uh, job of mine is I got to I got to fill those three chairs with people just to look at what we do. And I thought of you first, and I just want you to help me out, okay? So here's the thing. You said you could make it, and I appreciate that so much because it means a lot to me, your opinion. But but if there if you have a just a an unbelievable emergency, and there's for some reason you cannot make it, promise me something, will you? Silence. They say, yes, now you have them. You say, contact me in enough time that I have time 
to fill those chairs with other people, maybe my second, third, fourth choice. Okay. And they say, yes. And so in that last hour, when they're supposed to be getting ready to go, there's not enough time for them to fulfill their promise to you to fill that last chair. Now they think you might be fired. Now they think you're going to lose your opportunity. You understand? That's the best you can do, guys, except picking them up and bringing them in a car. That's the best. Okay. And so the key to getting people to a meeting is number one, making them accountable to someone other than you and to themselves. And so this is what you do. You say, look, and you never tell them to come to a meeting. You never say come to a meeting. Never use the word meeting again in your in your entire network marketing career. Never use the word business opportunity. Never use the word come to a meeting. If you're doing that, you're already losing and you don't even know why. I just told you why, okay? There's some words you just do not use anymore. Business opportunity means MLM pyramid scheme to most people, okay? If you, because everybody uses that term, all right? And so what, what, you, what you have to do is, guys, you don't call it a meeting. What you say is, look, uh, can, can, can you come on? I, I just want to introduce you to my team and give you a chance to view the project the way I did and see what kind of value there is in it and give me your opinion. Guys, that has a whole different feel than, hey, you want to come to a meeting? Yeah, yeehaw, let's go to a meeting. Yeah, that'll be fun. But there's some square dancing later on in the evening. Guys, look, meetings, nobody wants to go to a meeting. So if, they, if you say that, if you ask them to come to a meeting, they don't show up, well, shame on you, right? You just ask them to jump off a cliff. And they might say they'll do that someday for you because they love you, but they're not really going to jump off that cliff, right? They're not going to be at the meeting. But if they know that the people that are important to you your bosses or managers or up on whatever it is, and they're waiting to meet them with you at this event, at this project opening, right? Then they're accountable to more than themselves and you. You understand? It's the best you can do to set it up. The best you can do to set it up. And then you know what happens if you do everything right. Rick Roberry still has less than 40% of the people show up that I invite to a meeting. It's the way it is. Zoom's a little higher. But how many times you wait on Zoom, you're like, what the hell's going on? On Zoom, you can kind of just chase them on their phone, right, till they get on, right? <laughs> so it's a little bit better, but it's not as effective as live meetings, guys. I mean, when we go to this event in Europe, I talk about that because it's coming up in, you know, two, three weeks. People are trying to invite as many people as they can to get there. Not only their team members, but people that they're working with, right? Or people that they're prospecting with. And the key is to do these kinds of things. Nobody wants to feel like they're an animal in a herd. Nobody wants to feel like they're just part of a bunch of people. You got to let them make sure that they're special, they're unique. It's it's and identify them as someone that you're so excited to meet the team, and then you'll have much greater success getting them to the meetings, guys. So here's a recap of what I've said tonight, guys. Each of these topics is a two-hour training, so please forgive me for trying to put it all in one thing. But guys, you got to understand if every day is not day one in your life, you're wasting part of your life. Here's the problem. Everybody has bad things that happened to them in the past. Everybody has baggage out there. What day one says is let that baggage go. See, what happens is you go through life. See, by the time you get 35 years old or something like that, people say you can't recruit that older group because they have too many scars. You know what that means? That means that what's happened is every single day they're put, they have a bit like a Santa Claus sack on their back, right? And every day they're putting more negatives in. They take that baggage with them all the way forward every single day. Pretty soon it's too heavy and they just collapse mentally under that pressure. You see how important is day one? You know what day one says? Day one says, I got this baggage. I got the things that happened in the past. And the day one says, just do this. That's day one. You let go of the baggage, guys. Stop talking about everything that happened bad in the past. I know almost everybody does that. Guys, every time you do that, you're losing a minute of your life or five minutes of your life, however long it takes. You're losing time in your life. Not only that, but you're destroying the energy that you need to win. You have to let go of the past. You have to let the baggage go. Guys, look, I, I was home. My mother died at 15. I was homeless at 15 years. I lived in the back of a pickup truck for three years, right? I excelled in sports and music and different things, okay? By the time I was old enough to work a job, I killed it. You know why? Because I didn't hold on to all the crap, right? I just went forward. 
See, we're all, you just say, I'm guilty of that. We're all guilty of this, guys. We've all done this. But see, if you find yourself talking about something bad that happened, talking about something that didn't work out, if you're spending time talking about yesterday, you're wasting day one energy. You understand that, right? See, when people, if people that know me best, uh, I'm always happy. I'm always positive. I'm always looking forward to everything, right? And you know why? Because I, I ain't got no baggage, none, zero. I've let it all go. I don't even know how to hold on. I don't even know how to hold on to the bag anymore. It's gone. See, that's what it is, guys. You got to let it go. Can you do that? Can, can you let it go? Can you let it go? Because when you do learn how to do that, guys, you'll understand what day one truly means, what it really means, you see. It's more than just a fun thing to say. It's a way that you live your life is day one, right? So I say, what day is it? And everybody says, day one, you guys have been on this one. You now understand truly and deeply more what it means when somebody screams back, I know it's day one. And that's the way it is for me. Every day for me, for the rest of my life is always going to be day one, you see? And now you got the attitude, and then you go out there and you take the actions, guys, and you just freaking win. You see, we're here, and I, I'm going to wrap it with this, guys. I just got a lot of energy tonight. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me, you know. I just got a lot of energy. But I love to win. You understand that? I love it. I love to win. And you know what I love more than winning? I love to teach others how to win. You see, the thing that drives me is to teach other people the things I've learned. You know, people say, I think we were in Atlanta a couple of years ago. People asked me, I was on stage. They said, Rick, why are you still in the trenches? Why are you still working hard? Guys, I just did my 431st Saturday call this last week. Consistency, right? Over time pays. They say, Rick, why do you keep on going? Why do you keep on going? I got 431 Saturdays I gave up when I didn't need the money when I started. Think about that, guys. Why would I do that? Well, it's, it's summed up in this, guys. They ask me, Rick, why don't you retire? Why are you still working hard? Why, well, why don't you just retire on the beaches of the world? Guys, I retired when I was 26. And I've been on all the beaches of the world all my life. Now my mission, my purpose, and my crusade is to get you on those same beaches of the world. You see, <laughs> That is my mission. That is my purpose for being here. And that is my crusade, guys. I love you guys almost too much. I sacrifice for you in ways you can't even imagine of my life, of my time, of the things that I could be doing otherwise. And what I'm telling you is it's worth it. I'm happy because I see so much success. I see so many positive things going on, guys. But just promise me one thing, guys. And I'm going to wrap it up with this. Just promise me, promise me. Can you promise me one thing? Can you promise me one thing? commit to every day for the rest of your life that it's always going to be day one. Sorry. And then my mission is complete, you see. My mission is complete at that moment. So that's what drives me. That's what I want. That's what motivates me. And uh, and I just want to thank Rakan for the opportunity to talk to this team. My favorite Team. I love this team, you know, the death. Number one, I get to speak in English for once. That's really nice, you know. Uh, and I can get twice as much done in an hour <laughs> as with a translator. So thank you guys. I love y'all. You know, I hope I see you soon. I hope we have an event where we can all be together, you know, wrap our arms around each other, dream together, win together, and always, always understanding that every day, if we're going to win, has to be day one. All right. Love y'all. That's that's my message for tonight, guys. Did the best I could with a short period of time. Thank you, guys. Thank you.